everyone, my name is Amoy Anderson and today we're here at the Amnesty International 50th year anniversary. And the theme for this event is passing on the torch. We're very ex excited as um, MVYLI to be a part of this event. And so we're here today to just meet some of the leaders and we are future leaders ourselves. This is Amnesty's 50th birthday and we are proud to be passing the torch to all of you to the new generations, uh, and I would like to say to all of you, never lose your passion, never lose your sense of decency, never lose your hope, never lose your convictions that you, one of you, two of you, a hundred of you, can make the world a better place for all of us. I believe that uh, it is essential that those of us who, in our youth, were handed the torch by our elders, as was I, have an obligation and a responsibility to make sure that that torch not only burns brightly, but that it is also passed on to the generations of the future. My name is Harry Belafonte, and my life is filled with activism both in the arts as well as in social pursuits. And I would hope that all who see this little offering would understand how important it is to nurture our young people and to make sure that we pass on to them those ideas, those thoughts, those instruments that will be important to the health and the welfare of our planet and to our future. Thank you very, very much. Leaving a legacy for future generations is incredibly important. I think the reason why it's important is because it's continuity through generations, and it gives you a reason actually for striving and living in life. So the legacy itself is important, but the legacy I'd want to leave to people of the world is to take care of Mother Earth, take care of our children, take care of each other. Uh, I'm lucky enough to be here tonight at Amnesty International event, and to hear these people put their life on the line for people they don't even know is amazing. But I think coming from the vineyard in a small island, sustainability is so important, not just our environment of the island, but of each other. I think that for younger people who are joining the amnesty movement and the human rights movement, um, they find it very inspiring to hear what their predecessors have done, the older generation have done, and I think uh, they find it highly uh, motivational to know the history and the past, and, and you know, they then adapt to the new challenges and come together to fight for justice and to fight for human rights. I do think that more important than the, the flash and the glitz of what we're doing right now at present is the legacy that we leave behind and the meaningful institutional structures that we build to actually empower young people in the way that we were just talking about in this great event here. You know, in the U.S. government, from my perspective, our challenge has been how can we institute lasting structures um, that will maintain, you know, a steady drumbeat of programs that keep the United States at the cutting edge of empowering young people as political actors and as actors on the ground that can have voices in their communities and as economic actors. Legacies are complex animals. They have many parts. For my part, my contribution, I hope, is to leave the memory of the contributions of people of African descent. For too long they were obliterated, they were lost, they were hidden, they were stolen, they were denied. So I've made it my business since I was an undergraduate at Yale to resurrect the great black tradition and to enshrine it, to publish it in encyclopedias, in anthologies, in books, and in documentary films that I've had the pleasure of, of writing and and creating. Fortunately, I have two sons, and uh, eight and fifteen, and I, I think we're leaving them a pretty terrible legacy. Uh, and I guess my message would be: do better than your parents did, and uh, think globally. I guess that's um, something that's changed in my lifetime. Um, it's not that the world didn't impinge on me as an American growing up, but I don't think we understood it to the degree that people today do, that we live in a global village, economically, politically, immigration, everything. And I guess uh, if I would pass on any wisdom that I lacked was that 
think not just in terms of your community or your country, but uh, the whole world. The legacy uh, I would like to leave to the next generation is to have them uh, be kind like a dove, uh, fly high like uh, an eagle, and uh, walk hard like a bee. Because the kindness is really precious. When you are kind, uh, that kindness is toward someone else, but it's also uh, toward yourself. Because when you do something good to others, you are doing something good to yourself, you feel uh, well, uh, it increases your inner peace, it also increases the amount of peace in the world. Uh, so it's, it's a really a value we should leave to the next generation. Uh, and working hard, of course, like it be, it's like uh, um, you do what you do the best you can, uh, you, you do it in a team because you cannot achieve great things if you work alone. So teamwork is key. And also flying uh, high, like an ego, it's basically have a big dream, aim high. There is a proverb that says that uh, uh, you aim toward the moon. If you don't get there, at least you will land among the stars. From my vantage point, because children are dependent upon adults for their basic needs, I would hope that the legacy we leave our children is a legacy of activism rather than indifference. The notion that you can take the tools that are available today, the information age that we're in, the internet, the digital age that we're in, and you don't have to wait on governments to act. You can, you can take control, you and your friends, your community center, your synagogue, your church, your class group, or you alone. You can volunteer time, you can undertake projects, you can advocate, you can raise your voice, you can make noise, you can run websites, you can make films, you can make change. And that, I think, is, that would be the legacy that I would like to see. That's the legacy that I would like to create out of my own work at Media Voices. That's why I show up every day. Thank you for introducing me to these wonderful people. They tackled me the minute I walked into the room, and they've been holding me hostage ever since. Thank you, Nani. Keep the spirit. Love you.